Okay, here you are, in the middle of the ocean. It's endless, but you can't see it, because there's a thick fog all around you. Dense clouds hide the huge but dim sun. Is it day or night? You don't know. There's only a gray haze around you. You're alone. Even if you try to swim down, after several hours, you still won't be able to see the bottom of the ocean. And that's a typical water planet for you. I know, sounded kind of dark, but it's not that bad. These water worlds are more interesting than they may seem, so let's take a look at them. The ocean planet is a planet that consists, as you might have guessed, mainly of water, ice, and maybe some rocks. Think of the Earth's oceans. It's horrifying depths, the Mariana Trench, and all that. And now, can you guess how much space all the water on Earth takes up? 0.025%, exactly. Now, just try to imagine a world of 40-60% to 60 water. If you dive in there, the depth can exceed 60 miles. Compared to that, the 6-mile depth of our Mariana Trench sounds like nothing. And yeah, the pressure there will be enormous. It can reach up to 20,000 Earth atmospheres. Very crushing. Now, it may sound scary, but it still would be great to find out more about these planets. Fortunately, according to scientists' calculations, there may be a lot of such planets in our galaxy alone. Well, you don't have to go far. You can find these water guys even in our solar system. Not planets, of course, but moons. Jupiter has Ganymede and Callisto, and Saturn has Titan and Enceladus. The ocean can reach up to 30% of the mass of these moons. Although it isn't clear whether these oceans are covered with a thick crust of ice. But we've discovered quite a few full-fledged ocean planets. This is because the conditions in which these planets may exist are very specific. For example, this planet should be somewhere 6 to 8 times larger than the Earth. If it's smaller, it'll have a rocky surface. But if it's bigger, it'll turn into a gas giant. At the same time, it must be in the habitable zone of its star. A little further, and the planet immediately turns into an icy giant or a cold super-Earth. So yeah, these guys are very picky. We first started exploring these planets back in the 1970s. However, since then, we found only a couple of them. But they're still very interesting. The first planet is Galice 1214b. It was the very first ocean planet that we discovered. Initially, the scientists noticed only a small, dim dot. This dot turned out to be the red dwarf star Galice 1214, an unremarkable, completely ordinary star that's five times smaller than our Sun and 300 times dimmer. Scientists wouldn't worry about it at all, but back in 2009, they noticed that this star had one single planet, and this planet turned out to be quite strange. This super-Earth was 2.5 times bigger than our Earth and 6.5 times heavier. But at the same time, it had a very, very small density and about the same gravity as our planet. In other words, there were almost no rocks and metals on it. But it wasn't a gas giant either. So there was only one option left. It was covered in water and ice. And that's how we discovered the first ocean planet. Well, actually, we can only assume that it consists of water. That's what the mathematical calculations say. In reality, this planet is quite confusing. It's difficult to explore, and so far, scientists haven't been able to find anything there. No hydrogen, no helium, no water, nada. That's because the outer layer of the atmosphere of this planet is very dense, and it perfectly hides its composition. But even so, it's probably a water world. Galice 1214b is very close to its star. It's only 0.014 astronomical units away, which is less than the distance between the Moon and us. The year there lasts about 36 hours, and the temperatures, to put it mildly, are just wild. Scientists suggest that the average temperature there can reach 250 to 535 degrees Fahrenheit. Woo, that's hot! Remember the creepy description from the beginning? Well, actually, spending time on Gleesey 1214b would be a little different more like swimming in a steam boiler. Because of such gigantic temperatures, the ocean on the surface will be constantly in a state close to boiling without actually reaching it. So, imagine that you're descending to the surface of this planet, flying through clouds of steam. And then, you suddenly find yourself in the water. What? But when did it happen? 
Well, that's because the boundary between steam and water on Gliese 1214B will be very blurred. Of course, you won't be able to swim to the bottom of this ocean. But most likely, this bottom is covered with a very thick layer of so-called hot ice. It's like regular ice, but it doesn't really care about the laws of physics, so it just doesn't melt even at gigantic temperatures. And the thickness of this ice can reach as much as 3,000 miles. So that's it for the creepy Gliese 1214B. And not an Airbnb in sight! Now, although we can't 100% guarantee that it's a water world, we still have another candidate for this position. A newly discovered planet called TOI 1452b. This planet, located in the Dragon constellation, is almost 100 light years away from us. It was discovered using the TESS telescope by a group of researchers from the University of Montreal. This planet also belongs to the class of super Earths. It's 7 times larger than our planet, but 48 times heavier. Again, all this is at a very low density. Because of this, scientists have suggested that almost the entire planet consists of a giant ocean. Here, we were a little luckier. This world won't be just a giant puddle and some thick ice. On this planet, there's probably a rocky surface deep under the water, just like in a typical ocean. Don't get too excited, though. This ocean will certainly be very different from what we're used to. TOI 1452b also orbits a small red dwarf. And not even one, but two at once. At the same time, if the previous planet was close to its sun, then this one, on the contrary, is very, very far away. It's two and a half times farther from its stars than Pluto is from the sun. And it moves at great speed. A year there lasts only 11 days. But we still don't know many things about this planet. We'll probably get some new information when scientists observe it from the James Webb Telescope. Well, that's it. Wait, did you expect something else? Alright, alright, I know the question that bothers you the most. Can there be life? Well, this is a difficult question. We all know that water means life, and besides, these planets are in the habitable zones of their stars. So, potentially, yes, there might be life. Not some full-fledged civilizations, of course, but bacteria, fish, and some creepy giant monsters. I mean, you know, why not? However, this is very unlikely. Water alone isn't enough to create life, even though it's very important. There should also be some microelements and some minerals. And unfortunately, for most water planets, the composition will only consist of water and very thick ice. There won't be any minerals there. But don't give up there's still some probability. First of all, there are meteorites and comets. They can bring the necessary minerals to the planet. The more often they crash into it, the higher the probability that they'll bring something like this into the ocean and thus create life. Secondly, TOI 1452b actually has these minerals. Yes, we don't know how deep the rocky bottom is located there. But if it exists, then surely something could have originated there. Let's hope that new research with powerful telescopes will allow us to find out the truth. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to visit such a planet ourselves. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. There are almost no similarities between Earth and Jupiter. Ours is a sweet, small planet with plants and cute pandas. Jupiter is a giant gas horror with furious hurricanes which never subside. And if you fall into this planet, you might literally fly through it. But what would happen if our Earth was the size of the father of the solar system? Oh, this is going to be fun. Jupiter is a planet so big that I bet you can't even imagine its scale. Its radius is about 11 times the radius of Earth, and it's about 316 times more massive. So, to turn Earth into another Jupiter, we'd need to increase its radius by 11 times. If the planet's density remained the same, then the mass of our new Earth would increase greatly. Actually, it'd be as much as four times larger than Jupiter's. Of course, these changes wouldn't go smoothly. The very first thing that we would immediately notice, nope, not the size, gravity. It would increase by about 11 times compared to old Earths. 
Scientists say we can actually survive on a planet with greater gravity, but only if it's less than five times stronger than what we have now. Well, let's assume that we're daredevils, always ready to challenge nature. What would our life be like? Well, not very pleasant. After each step, you'd have to sit down on a bench and take a break, as if you've just run a marathon. Yes, it would be that hard to walk. Oh, and good luck with getting up later. In order to somehow move around this planet, we'd have to pump up very strong muscles. No more problems with junk food, cause you'd have to become a heavy lifter just to get to the refrigerator. The force of gravity affects not only movement, but also the size of everything. Do you know that many astronauts gain some height due to weightlessness in space? So if you're worried about being short, here's a solution for you. On the other hand, strong gravity would make us all shorter. This would go not only for humans, but for everything on our planet. Trees would become very small. To grow upward, they would have to move water from their roots to branches, which would be unrealistic with such gravity. So they'd all turn into little bushes. Also, no more mountains. Even the largest ones would become very small. But at least now, everyone would be able to conquer Everest. This would also apply to animals. Our pets would have to quickly evolve into pumped up corgis just to be able to walk somehow. Oh, and say goodbye to birds, of course. If you think that's not enough suffering, let's add another thing. It would be very difficult for us to breathe. Atmospheric pressure would increase dramatically. That's because Earth would start to pull air toward itself with great force. You'd literally feel the weight of it on your shoulders. Remember what I said about taking a break after each step? Now, imagine that you'd also have to breathe through a pillow. Yeah. And that's not all. Atmospheric pressure plays an important role in the behavior of water molecules. It would be much more difficult for water to boil or turn into ice. Most icebergs would melt, and it's possible that we'd have no more clouds, too. All water vapor would come crashing down on us in giant torrents of rain. We'd be lucky if we didn't get flooded instantly. But, oddly enough, there would also be some advantages. For example, everything around us would become much more spacious. Assuming we didn't get flooded, there would even be a bunch of deserted areas on the planet. Maybe land prices would finally fall. But these unexplored areas would most likely remain unexplored, since we'd hardly be able to travel across seas and oceans. Not only because moving across the water would be incredibly difficult, but also because all water bodies on the planet would become 10 times larger. The very thought of getting lost in the ocean is frightening, but imagine if it was 10 times deeper and bigger? Uh-oh. So, no more sailing. And forget about flying by plane. Or visiting space ever again. But it seems like it's still not all. If Earth was the size of Jupiter, we'd also have volcanoes raging everywhere. Due to the increase in its mass, Earth would become terribly unstable. All extinct volcanoes would become active again and there would be lava and poisonous gases everywhere. In 1883, there was the most destructive eruption in the history of humankind, the eruption of the Krakatoa volcano. It occurred on one small island, but people all over the planet could feel the consequences. The eruption destroyed the island, triggered many tsunamis, and clouds of poisonous gases spread for miles. Now imagine this, but 10 times worse. That's what would happen on our Jupiter-sized Earth. It would probably be similar to the fall of the Chicxulub meteorite, the one that wiped dinosaurs off the face of the Earth. Then, poisonous gases spread all over the planet, causing one of the greatest massive extinctions in the history of Earth. Oh, and we would also lose the magnetic field, like the cherry on top of the cake. The magnetic field is very important for life on Earth. According to Rory Barnes from the University of Washington, it shields life on the planet from the nastiness of space, which means all sorts of radiation and solar winds. 
There's a molten iron core inside our planet that is responsible for producing the magnetic field. If the amount of pressure on this core increased due to gravity, it could solidify. And because of this, Earth's magnetic field would disappear. We would be exposed to the effects of cosmic radiation. Too scary to even imagine. All right, so now we know that living on this new Earth would be a real nightmare. But what about outer space? You've probably heard that Jupiter, thanks to its strong gravity, protects us from asteroids. Well, this would become our job. Jupiter experiences about 24,000 collisions a year. And now, it'd be our destiny. Do you remember me mentioning the Chicxulub meteorite? Similar tragedies happen to our planet once every 100 million years or so. But if it became the size of Jupiter, these guys would visit us every Friday. Also, we'd have to say bye-bye to the moon. Our natural satellite is too close to us. So if Earth grew in size, it would be a real catastrophe. We would literally watch the moon being torn apart in the sky. Of course, after that, all these fragments would crash into us. One of the theories claims that billions of years ago, the moon somehow separated from Earth and its pieces gathered into a ball. Now, it would be like watching its creation rewind. And even if the moon survived, somehow remaining in Earth's orbit, the changes in the tides would still be dramatic. The consequences of these changes would be very unpredictable, but probably a bunch of tsunamis would be some of them. On the other hand, we'd probably gain a couple of new moons. Jupiter has as many as 79 of them. It would probably be a spectacular view if only gas clouds from all those volcanic eruptions didn't block it. Also, the appearance of a second giant planet would have significant consequences for the whole solar system. Don't worry, other planets wouldn't crash into us. Many people underestimate just how far the planets are from one another. But still, the new Earth would shift the orbits of other planets a little and affect the rotation speed and Earth itself would rotate around the Sun much more slowly because of its huge mass. For example, one year equals 12 Earth years on Jupiter. All this, of course, would greatly affect seasons and the climate in general. So, would there be life on Earth? Bold of you to even ask this question. But if one day we do manage to find a habitable super-Earth close to Jupiter in size, it would be very interesting to take a look at it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. The Javari Valley in Brazil is an untouched jungled area of 33,000 square miles, slightly larger than Austria. This place is protected to stop outsiders from entering. This isolated area is home to one of Brazil's largest indigenous territories. Here, uncontacted tribes with no understanding of the outside world can live peacefully in the jungle. Observation is only made by officials from the air. It provides a small glimpse and a better understanding of how early hunter-gatherer societies once lived. Up to 3,000 inhabitants within 14 different tribes live deep inside the reservation in up to 19 villages. This makes the Javari Valley one of the largest concentrations of isolated peoples in the world. It's illegal for outsiders to enter this area, as contact with outside humans would be volatile to the natives' health. These remote tribes haven't evolved an immunity to the many bacteria that we have, so it's crucial they are left alone. Within the Vatican, there is a massive secret storage room it contains up to 52 miles of shelving for archives that date as far back as the 8th century. It contains many significant letters, books, and other documents from notable people collected by the Vatican. One letter from Abraham Lincoln here is from the 1860s, discussing the progress of the USA with the Papal States. Another is from Queen Mary of the Scots, when she sought help from the Pope in 1587. And there are even documents regarding the trial of Galileo in the 17th century, 
as he questioned the true movements of the Earth moving around the Sun. There are 1,200 years of documentation regarding world events. However, most of it is secret, as access is only provided to academic researchers. And to be one of those, you will need to be the minimum age of 75 and must renew your request for access to the room every six months. And even then, while you poke through the secret documents, you are under constant supervision of the Swiss Guard. With so much secrecy, it would be interesting what else could be hidden in these confidential documents. Halfway between Hawaii and Australia lies the lonely Howland Island. It has a long history of being an isolated and unforgiving location. Since 1857, miners spent two decades extracting bird droppings that were centuries old, a valuable fertilizer at the time. The island was abandoned until 1935 when the USA attempted to make a colony there. They were excited to build its first airport. They expected it would one day be a great location for a stopover flight, creating an easier connection from Australia to California. A flight path had even been prepared on Howland Island for the arrival of Amelia Earhart. It was all set up as a landing point for her circumnavigational flight of the globe. Unfortunately, Amelia lost contact before making it to the aisle. The dream of the airport to be used on the Trans-Pacific flight path was abandoned, and the colony soon dispersed with no further attempts to repopulate it. But the island is now a protected reservation for the fragile ecosystem that surrounds it. It's visited once every two years to assess the regeneration of wildlife, and no one is allowed to enter without official authorization. Heard Island is an offshore territory of Australia. 80% of it is covered in ice, and it has the country's only active volcanoes. It's also surrounded by glaciers with the highest descending to sea level from 7,900 feet. If you're lucky enough to gain authorization to access the island, you can do this only by sailing 4,000 miles across rough seas. After you've successfully sailed the long voyage, you'll find yourself in this uninhabited 142 square mile territory. Congrats, you've made it to one of the most isolated places in the world. Only whalers and sealers sometimes lived here until the 1880s. And since these whalers left, only researchers have made the daring voyage. Since 2011, no one has returned. All the buildings have broken down over the years from the extreme weather. So it's not the best option for a vacation. With freezing temperatures and powerful winds that can reach 110 miles per hour, only the hardiest of plants and animals can survive this place. In France, there's a network of caves, called the Lascaux Caves, that provides artwork that is truly unique. Wall paintings that date back 17,000 years ago from the early Magdalenian age provide around 6,000 images. They decorate the walls, giving a great insight to what types of animals existed in that ancient period. Some of the animals portrayed have been extinct in France for thousands of years, like the ancient oryx and rhinoceros. Painted in a mixture of red, yellow, and black colors, made from several different mineral pigments, the pictures depict what hunter-gathering societies hunted from the region. But the ingredients were vulnerable from tourists' visits, which were then stopped in 1963. The carbon dioxide from the visitor's breath and presence of light caused lichens, crystals, and molds to appear in the caves, which provided potential damage to the minerals of the paintings. These caves are now heavily restricted for entry, but replicas of the paintings have been made available to provide a similar experience. Canada is the second largest country in the world, although the northwestern part is mostly unpopulated. One island in this area, Devon Island, is the largest uninhabited island on the planet. It covers a massive area of 12,000 square miles, almost the same size as Croatia. People struggled to live in this desolate land. The Inuits tried for a while, but even they decided to give up on this unforgiving land in the 1930s. With low precipitation on the island, harsh winds, and freezing temperatures, it can only support microclimates of vegetation. 
Settlements were also abandoned in 1951. Since they weren't economically viable with the limited resources Devon Island had to offer. However, today, due to its similarities with Mars, scientists make the difficult journey to research the island. The environment is very difficult to live in, with its poor terrain, freezing temperatures, and isolation. So, it's become a perfect match for NASA to test equipment and crew for future missions to Mars, the Moon, and even asteroids. Halfway between the North Pole and the northern coast of Norway sits the Svalbard Archipelago. This isolated island is covered by snowy tundra. It's virtually unlivable here. But as you make the long journey, trekking through the snow, you might be lucky to reach the Svalbard Vault, poking out of a mountain. After accessing its daunting entrance, you follow through a long tunnel deeper into the mountain. You can hear constant noises from the cooling system all around you. This is to make sure the temperature is at a cool negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit, perfect for the contents it's preserving. As you reach the end of the tunnel, you enter the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This is basically a safety deposit box holding the world's largest collection of agricultural biodiversity. Since its opening in 2008, 13,000 years of agricultural history have been accumulated, with over a million separate distinct crop samples stored here. The purpose of the vault is to provide a backup against any accidental loss of crops throughout the world. The 148 countries who deposited into the vault can withdraw when they need to. However, it is heavily restricted, with only authorized personnel accessing the seeds within. In Brazil, there's an island just 21 miles from the coast. It's one of the most dangerous islands in the world. Filled with a lot of snakes, it's aptly named Snake Island. Golden lancehead snakes became marooned on this island when it separated from the mainland during the last ice age. From their isolation, they adapted to their surroundings, growing in numbers, and their venom becoming more potent with whatever prey they could find. Their venom is up to five times more powerful than their mainland cousins. And with the island the size of only 43 hectares, it's home to 4,000 venomous snakes. That's at least one snake per square foot. The island is restricted due to the highly venomous residents. Only officials and researchers observing the snakes are allowed access. But if you happen to be sailing by and your boat sinks, there's a number to call just in case. Just don't leave the beach. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.